Okay, so in this video, we're going to prove that if you have one factor A and you're multiplying it by another factor B, and you're raising that product to the nth power, that this is equivalent to A to the power of n times B to the power of n. And that's our proof here. Now in this case, A could be equal to B or A could be different than B. That's kind of the beauty of it. So to give you a quick example, let's say we have two times three to the power of four. Well, this is equivalent to two to the four times three to the four, which is equal to 16 times 81. And what is that? Well, 10 times 81 is 810, plus six times 81 is 486, right? Is that right? Uh, 800 plus 400 is 1200, plus 90, plus six, so it's 1296. And that is essentially what the law is telling us. We can apply it this way, but also it's intuitive because if you have two times three to the fourth, that represents this, two times three multiplied out four times. And we're gonna kind of, our proof is gonna rely on this intuition because the commutative property tells me I can change the order of these factors and the associative property says I can change the grouping so I could put first those four twos, right? They're right here, one, two, three, four, and then I can follow that up, that's my first group now, with four threes. And you can see them here, one, two, three, four. And that is two to the fourth, which we have right here, and this is three to the fourth. So in a way, what we're doing is distributing the exponent here over multiplication. And it also applies for division. If we had a over b to the n, we could distribute that exponent over the top to a and the bottom b. But we're going to really focus on our proof here, the first one. So let's do that. All right, so, um, oops, don't want to scroll like that. Let's start by saying uh, what we know. We know that a times b, and I'm going with a thicker marker here. I think it's easier to see. a times b to the power of n. That means, well, with two times three to the power of four, it meant we have four groups of a times b. But in general, we have n groups of a times b. So it's gonna be a times b over and over again. We're gonna do that um, n times. So these, this dot, dot, dot here implies that uh, there could be a number of a, b, groups of a, b in there. There are n groups n groups of a, b, or you might say n, um, n factors, right? Because a, b is a factor, uh, as a product of two factors. So now we know our, our commutative and associative property says, well, if there are n groups of a, b, then there are n groups of a up front, a times a, n times, that's our first group. So there are n groups of a, n groups of a, and then we're multiplying that by n groups of b. n groups of b. Now what does that mean? Well, n groups of a by, by definition, n groups of a being multiplier and factors of a, I should say. I keep using the word groups, and I, I don't know if that's if there's a problem there, but basically every time I'm using the word groups here, I'm talking about factors. So maybe it'd be more accurate to call them factors, but I'm thinking of them as physical letters on the page. So I thought of them as groups, but maybe factors is better. Anyway, if we have n factors of a, that is a to the nth. That's our first part. That's what this is right here. And we're multiplying that by b factors but n factors of b, right? However many we have. So that is by definition b to the n, and that's it. We we're showing there that this a times b to the n is this right here. And again, it just goes right back to this example. We n is four, so we have four gr groups of two times three, which means we have four factors of two and four factors of three, and that's what we have here. All right, all right. Hope this helps. 